we put this extra storage in and I put the glass doors because I thought, wow, this is going to be great. But I don't want to look at my Christmas china all year mm-hmm. long. And then little by little, my glasses ended up there. And then a random salt and pepper shaker. And I was like, you know what? This is junky looking. No matter mm-hmm. how hard I tried to make it look really pretty, I needed the storage. And I thought the best way to do that would be to add some fabric behind it. It gives you an opportunity to add a little more style to the space mm-hmm. because you can choose. Fabric is a great way to add real personality. Welcome to the Imperfectly Empowered Podcast with DIY healthy lifestyle blogger, Anna Fulmer. Empowering you to transform your life. One imperfect day at a time. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Imperfectly Empowered Podcast. I'm your host, Anna Fulmer. Featured in the Huffington Post, Country Living Magazine, Good Housekeeping, and Bob Vila, Kim Montanero has a passion for helping women find uncommon beauty in the everyday. By sharing realistic decor at her award-winning website, exquisitelyunremarkable.com. Here to share her story and home decor on a budget ideas, which who doesn't need home decor on a budget ideas? Welcome, Kim. Hello. <laughs> Round two. <laughs> Round two. Oh my gosh. It's been quite the process since we last spoke. I hate technology. <laughs> I know. It really is. It's a necessary evil, but it, you know, and just when you think <sighs> you have it figured out, there's something yeah. that goes in with you. Yeah. It really is. It's so, so true. Well, you it sounds like you had a house full of people the last time anyways. So I did. I did. I, I still have a house full, not not as full, but I yeah. You know, my house is full. So it's is it usually thing. full? It is usually full. My um my husband's worked from home for the last, I would say, gosh, like six or seven years. Okay. Um and then my kids work from home also. So how old are your kids? Uh, 22 and 24. Okay. So, so they're all from home as well. Wow. That is a house full then. It's a house full. It really yeah. is. And then we've always been in the house. Um, mm-hmm. I was a teacher. I love kids. I grew up with a lot of siblings and my siblings were older than I am. And so lots of little kids all the time. And so mm-hmm. as soon as my kids came around, I was always the house. Oh, so I we I'm still the house when yeah. kids want to make dinner or have a movie night or watch you know eat popcorn or at this point it could be cocktails because they are 22 and 24. Mm-hmm. It's it's my house, which is great. I mean, they keep yeah. me going, and I know you know empty nest is on the horizon. So I take Aww. it all while I can. I love that. I love that the house. So fun. We are here with Kim from exquisitelyunremarkable.com. And I love kind of rewinding and telling people's backstories. You have like a whole history of things, which all of us do, but it's really fun when, you know, you see how it all meshes together to create the existing storyline. And one of the things I resonated with you when I was reading through your story is you mentioned how before you started blogging, you had no internet presence. So no Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and my story is exactly the same. I had, so four years ago now, I had no internet presence. But for you, this journey started, if I'm remembering, earlier than mine did, right? When did you start all that? Uh, 2013. So yeah, in March, it'll be 10 years, which I That's crazy. can't believe. I cannot believe. No plan for it. Not at all. Yeah. I When somebody said to me, you should start a blog. I was like, what's a blog? That's no what plan. I said. I love that. <laughs> Isn't that great? Wait, here's what's pathetic, though. I was only asking that question about four years ago. <laughs> well, you know, what's really funny about the whole thing is that when when I asked, blogs were like a big thing. They were, they mm. were everywhere. People were doing blogs. And then they kind of fell out of fashion for a, Interesting. a, a long time. And people were like, what's a blog? Or, oh, those bloggers. Or So it wasn't really a thing. And so, uh, you know, it, it makes sense to me that you almost didn't hear about them, know about <laughs> them, because they really weren't in vogue. And 
even now, I'm not really sure how many people know blogs still exist, but there seems yeah. to be sort of a resurgence of people who are on those other social media platforms, but aren't satisfied with getting their story across in one photo mm-hmm. and a couple of sentences. They want to share a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, if you guys know what a blog is, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. You're in good company. <laughs> we didn't know either. Um, you actually started in fashion design. Is that right? You initially went to school for fashion design. You mentioned you became a teacher, but now coming full circle, you have spent many years highlighting decor on a budget ideas so women can feel more comfortable in their home. And tell me a little bit uh, how fashion design came full circle for you. Um, well, in high school, uh, I started taking a few art classes when I was a senior, actually. Um, up until then, I was I loved dance and that was my thing. And mm-hmm. I was on a kick line and I was all in. And then senior year, once the dance season had ended, I was like, now what? And I'm a senior. I have most of my credits. I'm going to take an art class. And I fell in love with fashion design and the body Mm -hmm. drawing. And when it was time to go to school, I thought, I really want to do this, but I did not want to be in New York City, which is where I knew you had to be. Mm -hmm. I wanted that traditional, like ivy color covered building experience. So I went to a program that was three years at um, a traditional college. And then the last year you would go to the city and FIT. And when I started taking the other classes, I realized probably like a lot of young college students do that there's so much more out there than you realized. I also realized that I was a really big fish in a super teeny tiny art pond back here but when I got to college, I was like, oh, my goodness, the the talent that is out there in so many different fields is just mm-hmm. unbelievable. And I realized that I couldn't compete the way I needed to if I really wanted to take fashion. I can make um, a career. Yeah. So I actually went to school for teaching. I took a couple of uh, classes and then I decided, no, nope, I don't like this either. I want to do communications. Mm. And I love the idea of how um, the art tied in with advertising and the public speaking with public relations. So I went into the city and I did an internship for a museum and I just did not like the commute. New York City is fabulous commuting to it from other parts of New York. Not Mm. so fabulous. Um, So I got a job just doing whatever. I was a retail manager. I worked customer service, whatever I needed to do to pay the bills. And one day when I was babysitting for one of those many nieces and nephews, I realized the best times I had working were with children. It was Mm. always surrounded by the creativity. And so I started teaching and I taught kindergarten and first grade. And my favorite part of that was creating and showing the kids how to do things. And then I had children and I left. And you have teaching. two girls, right? You have two. two girls. Yeah. I left teaching to raise them and they started doing theater. And um, the theater director needed somebody who had a little bit of sewing background to help with the costumes. And then I got into set design. And so I was helping her with the sets and I was helping her with costumes and all that kind of fun stuff. And I, that sort of reignited a passion in me, um, of crafting and creating. Mm. And, um, when my husband and I had first gotten married, we had no money at all. We had both just finished master's degrees in college and started working and we wanted to furnish our apartment as beautifully as we could, but we wanted to save money for a house. So what we would do is on Sunday nights, we would go out because that was trash night and we would get ice cream cones from the local shop and we would drive around in the more expensive neighborhoods and we would see what they tossed. I love that idea. Write that down, guys. You're looking for a date night. (laughs) It really, you know what? It was a lot of fun. I love that. We, you know, we also learned a lot about different neighborhoods that we never knew about. When we were looking for houses, we were like, oh, this would be really, this would be a great neighborhood to live in or not. But we 
essentially would grab old lamps, old mirrors, old dressers, old furniture, and then we would bring them home and my husband would rewire them. And I would say, okay, I would like to paint it this color. And he'd be like, okay, I'll take care of the electrical. You do Mm. the design. Or I would say, I love this dresser, but you know, it doesn't work really well. That's why they threw it out. And he would say, okay, well, I'll rebuild the back of it and then you finish it. Mm -hmm. And so we furnished our apartment that way. And then when we bought our first house, we did the same thing. And it just sort of became not only a way for us to save money, but it also became something we did together as Mm. a couple on the weekends and something we enjoyed. And then people would come over and they would say, I love that table. And we'd be like, well, we made it. And people would be like, get out of here. We pulled that out of the garbage. So I guess I'd always been doing that. And um, then my kids got a little bit older and the house was mostly furnished. And actually my mom got really sick. She was um, 80. So it's not like she was really young, but she ended up with Parkinson's. And um, it was a really tough time. It was that time where you suddenly were, Mm. not the baby anymore now you, it was that transition from you know child to now you're the parent figure caregiver yeah and my siblings we all lived very close to one another so we were all sort of sharing in the uh caregiving of you know she'd broken this or fell here mm. and so um she couldn't drive anymore so we moved her to my sister's house and we thought we were set And then my sister was diagnosed with colon cancer. Mm. And we said, okay, now how are we going to take care of mom? Because now my sister, who was the main caregiver, needed care. And my other sister said, I will take care because their kids were up and out. And I had little kids at the time. And my other sister's husband was diagnosed with two different kinds of cancer at the same time. Mm. So we all lived really close to one another. But So we were all immersed in this and we are all very close. We're a close family. And so the day-to-day life for me was doctors, hospitals, sickness. And in between, I was running the kids to theater and sewing and painting or coming home and saying, you know, this wall is empty. It needs a painting. I'm going to make it. And I realized that that was my outlet. It was my Mm. Zen, like with everything else that was going on in the house. I somehow, some way in my life, I always seem to come back to that art. It's just the, the art was always the, Mm. the grounding force for me, whether it was making my house beautiful. So I had a sanctuary Mm -hmm. or, um, the physical act of painting just sort of, you know, you can't do anything else. Yeah. The creating. Yeah. It's a math problem. You know, a lot of times people are always like, oh, you sew. How is it that you can sew? You know, sewing is so difficult. Sewing is not difficult. Sewing is like driving a car. If you can drive a car and go straight, you can sew. Um, It's the planning. It's the pattern. It's the cutting. It's the engineering of it. And you can't really be involved in other things when Mm. you're trying to solve a problem like that. So I had mentioned to my nephew, um, that, you know, we were having this kind of conversation. He was older in college at the time. And he said, you should start a blog. You should just start writing because then it will take that creative process one step further. And that can be your outlet during Mm -hmm. the day for all this other stuff you have going on. And I said, what is a blog? And um, he explained what it was. I had no idea what I was going to write about, really. I thought about home decor, but I didn't know there was this entire cottage industry at the time of Mm. people who were out there writing blogs about decor. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to write about what I know, which is always what they say you're supposed to do anyway. Yeah. Yeah. No. And so I just started writing about little tips and tricks about my house and, you know, how to, how you can buy real flowers for yourself every day or every week at the grocery store, just Mm -hmm. take the box of cookies out and put the 399 tulips, you know, Mm -hmm. in and boom, your house can be beautiful or um, just little silly tips like that. And then eventually the teaching came back around and I started doing the DIYs and I would say, oh, here's this sign and I made it. 
And, um, you know, I just put a sticker on the front of it because I don't love stenciling or whatever. And it was so easy to just slap a sticker on the front and give it decoupage and go. And people would write in in comments and say, how did you do that? Exactly what product did you right, use? Right. Did you use a brush or a foam or whatever. And so I started breaking it down in step by step. And, you know, 10 years later, I'm still doing the same thing. Um, and I guess it really is, like you said, there's really no part of that story that can be discounted mm. when it comes to the, how I got where I am. Because yeah. Somehow right. all of it has a piece. Absolutely. Everyone. And that's uh, an element to stories. I always like to highlight you have those periods of time in your life where you think, what is the purpose of this? <laughs> like, what, how is this ever going to create a, a greater picture kind of a story? And it's so fun to hear people's stories and be able to see just the tapestry that has been woven over the years. Um, cottage if people are like, so what is her style? Uh, 1920 beach cottage mm -hmm. is really, and you've been in this house for the 10 years. Is that right? Like the beach cottage yeah. has been, yeah, yeah. And it's so cute. I'm like looking at pictures here. Um, my editors might be able to throw them up on the YouTube video, but I, I love the cottage, the cottage look, and then add the beach theme to it. And it's like, you're on a vacation all the time. <laughs> really is a really neat little place. It's, yeah. um, I, I went to the high school that my kids um, went to also, but I lived in a different neighborhood. It's not a big school district, but I lived in a different neighborhood. And the neighborhood I lived in was all 1960s development homes. Everyone looked exactly the same in the neighborhood and there was nothing different. And when my husband and I first um, were looking for houses, our realtor said, how about this area? This It's a 1920s beach cottage um, in a beach neighborhood, like it was a summer beach neighborhood. So nobody really lived here year round. They were just mm. these tiny little houses and everyone is different. So we actually started in a house across the street. Like I can literally see our first house across the street. That's it was so a two funny. bedroom cottage. And when we moved, my husband wheeled the barbecue like, <laughs> like across the street. It was really, really very funny, but That's awesome. Um, yeah, it's a charming little neighborhood. And I love the fact that the house has all these things my house didn't have growing up. Um, it has all these little nooks and crannies. It's mm. got all these little secret areas. It's it's only been owned by three people. Believe it or not, we're the third owners. Um, it was mm. built. They actually don't know when it was built. So, um, sometime between 1929 and 1932. It was mm. not here. And then it was. Mm. Um, but somebody had once said to me, I love the fact that you're only the third owners. It's a testament to how much that house has been loved. I, that's you yeah, that's that beautiful. Mm -hmm. but, yep, that's so fun. And I, when you look at the pictures too, I for some reason pictured like a like northeast kind of. Um, like in New England. I don't know. It just has that like cottagey. Then she's like, no, I'm in New York. <laughs> oh, <laughs> for some reason, I just, I don't know what my problem is. I, I in New York, I just have such a misconceived <laughs> Most picture of do. New York. It's very funny because uh, when you leave my neighborhood, there's a bridge, there's a small bridge to get out of it um, that goes over the harbor. And on the other side, there's a lot of hills. It's a really big, my neighborhood is full of hills and there's a, a really hilly area and it's filled with all these ship captains homes from the 1600s huh. wow. and it looks like a new england village when you see it and it's very charming new york is a very diverse ge geographic yeah. geological like whatever yes. it is, the proper word place there are on long island there are flat farmlands um there are hills there are ocean beaches where the sand is so powdery and there's huge mm. waves. There's the North shore of the Island where there are rocky beaches and, you know, almost no waves. Then you go upstate, there's mountains, snow, forests. We kind of have everything here. You really do. Yeah. It's great. There's the, the one, you know, well, the two things, it's very expensive. Um, mm. I've been here my whole life, so I have nothing really to compare it to. Mm. 
but it is very expensive. And the other thing is, is it's a nightmare to get off of um, and get mm. out of New York. If I mean, unless you live in the upstate area, but if you live on Long Island, if you live um, in Manhattan, to get out of here is just, you know, it's a bear. It's better to go north. That's where we go yeah. north a lot. You take a ferry. That's so interesting. Yeah. And then Connecticut. And then, you know, you can go visit somewhere else, but going the other way. Yeah. So what she's saying is a trip down here to Lancaster County is not likely. <laughs> yeah. Although some, somebody just sent me um, a travel guide to Lancaster County because I said, oh, I'd love to get away. And they were like, oh, my goodness, we just went and it was beautiful. That's so funny you said that. Yeah. Yesterday. So what did they I'm so. I'm curious, what did they do in Lancaster County that they loved so much? Um, I think that they stayed at a beautiful like bed and breakfast inn and did yeah. like a little town shop or whatever. But yeah, they said very, very sweet. I mean, it's worth it. It's not it's as big a nightmare as I say to get out of here, but no, I hear what you're saying. I I do get actually you guys can just take the train. Lancaster has a train. Yep. Lancaster City, right from yeah, you can basically hit Philly, Lancaster City, New York City. Yeah, well, there you go, guys. There's a little um, insider scoop on New York. And where, so I should ask this, if anyone's looking for a vacation destination in New York, where's the top place you would tell them to go to visit? The Hamptons, Montauk, Audi, okay. which is the, you know, the tip of the island. Um, mm -hmm. In the summer, there's no place like it. It's just beautiful mm. out there. Mm -hmm. and. Despite what people think, it is, you know, everyone's like, oh, the Hamptons, because you see it in the tabloids, and that's where everybody has these big parties. There are very quiet, affordable areas of mm. the Hamptons that you can stay in. Montauk is like a great town, but if you want like a traditional beach with white, mm. powdery, sandy, you know, sink your toes into it, you can see whales, seals, mm. fishing. It's a great place to go. I've taken my kids out there. Every year since they were born, I think my girls learned how to walk out there. Oh, you know, you have your favorite places to go, but yeah, there or Lake George. I know I'm probably hitting the two places everybody knows about, but Lake George is a, it's upstate New York. There's a place called the Sagamore. Unbelievable! It's a That's giant. So cool. It reminds you if you've ever seen the movie Dirty Dancing. It reminds you of that kind of inn. Interesting, yeah. Traditional old. They have games and fun things, and there are paddle boats and music nights, and the that's so fun. It's beautiful, yeah. And you can go skiing there in the winter, and swimming and boating in the summer. So I mean, there you go, guys. She's your travel agent. For yeah, this. which is funny because <laughs> I am not a traveler. I am yeah. the biggest homebody. That you've well, New York is your home, though, so you've made good use of it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very, very true. Very true. That's awesome. Inside scoop. There you go. All in New York. We are going to take a quick break, but when we come back. Stay tuned for a speed round of this or that with Kim, and we're going to dive in a little bit to some of her expert advice on DIY home decor on a budget. And we're going to chat about some of her amazing blog posts that you can check out and decorate your home for cheap and love it right when we come back. You have tried it all. Worried you will never lose the extra weight or reclaim the energy you once enjoyed? Want to achieve fat loss without spending hours in a gym or eliminating entire food groups from your diet? Well, now you can. In the virtual Faster Way to Fat Loss with Anna, my six-week fitness and nutrition program, you will learn how to pair effective 30-minute workouts with all-natural evidence-based nutritional strategies to leverage what you eat and when you eat to reset your metabolism and burn fat fast, even that stubborn belly fat. I am a dual certified nurse practitioner passionate about teaching sustainable strategies to promote fat loss and prevent disease. I have cheered on thousands of clients who have done just that with the Faster Way program. In my six week program, the average client currently sheds seven inches of body fat. 93% report more energy and 89% state that their mental health has improved. 100% of clients report they feel this program is sustainable. Curious to try the program but not sure if the strategies will work for you? Try the Faster Way strategies for free. Head to www.hammersandhugs.com and sign up for my free 7-Day Fat Loss Accelerator course today and start your own transformation story. 
All right. We are back with Kim. All right. This or that. There's basically two options. No stress, whichever comes to mind first. Would you rather go on vacation to a house on the beach or a cabin in the woods? Beach. Beach. In New York, though. In New York. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) I'll take a beach anywhere. Bermuda. Oh, me too. Beach in Bermuda. I'm good. Yeah. I hear you. Warm and sunny. Um, Okay. Would you rather read an old fashioned book or a Kindle? A book. I just love the way they smell. I know that's weird. I do too. No, it's not. I Yes. About the feel and the Mm -hmm. smell of it. Mm -hmm. Walking into a bookstore and you smell old books is lovely. Yeah. I'm transported. I like, I walk into those types of rooms and I feel like I'm in a different time. Um, Favorite book? The Secret Garden. Oh, that's a classic. Yeah. I, um, it was my mom's, like she had a book and after she passed, mm. I found it in a box and my daughter and I both read it one summer together. I think the message in it is, is beautiful. There's mm. a beautiful message to it. It is a great, that's a great story. Candy or baked goods? Baked goods. What's your I'm favorite baked good. good? Um, my daughter makes these unbelievable shortbread chocolate chip cookies, and Ooh. I could eat like them all day long. And they're wait short. Wait, what makes it shortbread? I don't know. I am not a baker <laughs> at all. I I would rather clean your kitchen than cook in it. <laughs> oh, and, fascinating! And okay. For Christmas one year, during um, you know when we were all really home home. I bought her a KitchenAid mixer for Christmas and she just started baking and she got this recipe somewhere and has added a little of this mm-hmm. and taken out a little mm-hmm. of that. And they are my weakness. I just really. picture a lot of butter, which means I'd probably love it. Yes, there's <laughs> a lot of butter. I know that for a fact. Butter is the secret to delicious baked goods. It is. And my dad um, is mad at me for that. <laughs> in moderation in moderation this is true love me some butter though um okay last question would you rather decorate for fall or for christmas okay so i know this is going to be weird but for fall christmas i absolutely love christmas decorating but my house is like even though it's on the beach and summer is my absolute favorite season it has a winter feel to it. There's mm. a giant stone fireplace in that living room. I dark decorate with a lot of darker colors. And so they just suit fall. And there's so many opportunities to really dig in and decorate for fall, different projects you can do. And yeah, you can leave it out longer. Like it, yeah. It, yeah. you really can leave fall out from the last few weeks of August all the way up until, you know, you start to decorate for Christmas. So I love yeah. Christmas, twinkle lights and all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, but no, fall. I love, I mean, I, I love decorating for Christmas, but the color palette of fall is actually my favorite. Yeah. I the like that, warm sun washed colors. Yes. And favorite. I don't tend to dig into those colors much, uh, you know, mm. the oranges and they're not really in my palette that much. Yeah. I find that when fall comes around, I kind of crave them and then yeah. you, I do pull them in. So and I'm, I guess my main decorating color in this house really focuses on the red. And so mm-hmm. when this comes around, it's just more red. And the yeah, fall. I can see that. Yeah. yeah. Fall yeah. enables Unity. you to pull some of the greens and the... Yeah, Linen purple, and even orange. Even yeah, that's true. If you want to, yeah. like, there's so many. I mean, today there's, I don't believe in decorating rules anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just out, so you can use any color you want at any yeah. time of the year. But yeah, fall, I like those colors. Well, you have so many super cute ideas on your blog. I'm only touching on a couple of them, but I dug through several. And you also gave me a list of some of your top posts because in reality, what is true for a lot of us as bloggers is when a lot of people in the World Wide Web find a post useful, it tends to generalize well to all of us. All of us busy women looking for DIYs. One of the really cute ones I love is you did one on how to cover glass doors with fabric. This is like a tried and true cottage style, I would say. And I'm a French country uh, lover. That's kind of my decor 
love farmhouse French country. And I would also argue this is a very French country look yes. as well, which cottage pools a little bit, but there's almost like a French country cottage and an American cottage. There's some nuances there, but I would say this translates well to both. So tell us a little bit about this glass doors with fabric. And I would say if you have a hutch somewhere or you have like a um, upper cabinetry that is glass, this would apply to a lot of different spaces. It really, it, lends itself to so many different things. Um, I started because I'm sitting right now in my kitchen and above it, there are three glass uh, cabinet doors. And I would put my Christmas chinas in there. I live in a cottage, so there's not a lot of storage space in here. I don't have a dining room. So in there, I love the charm of the glass. So when we put the kitchen in, because the kitchen was this big when we moved in, it was Mm -hmm. not meant for a family at all we put this extra storage in and I put the glass doors because I thought, wow, this is going to be great, but I don't want to look at my Christmas china all year Mm -hmm. long. And then little by little, my glasses ended up there and then a random salt and pepper shaker. And I was like, you know what? This is junky looking. No matter Mm -hmm. how hard I tried to make it look really pretty, I needed the storage. And I thought the best way to do that would be to add some fabric behind it. It would really It gives you an opportunity to add a little more style to the space because Mm -hmm. you can choose fabric is a great way to add real personality. Like a lot of people struggle with what's my style? How do I get that style in the room? You know, what's the personality? And they always say the devil is in the details or the magic is in the details. Fabric is a great way to get that detail and to add that personality and Mm -hmm. to really define what style it is. So I grabbed some fabric, but I did not want to drill holes into the wall or um, into the cabinets. It just Mm -hmm. wasn't going to uh, work well. I didn't want to damage them. And I also thought, what if I did want to make this pretty and I wanted the fabric done? So I just, you know, put on my thinking cap and I put Velcro on the back of the cabinets, sticky Velcro. Mm -hmm. And then I just cut the fabric to fit the glass and just stuck it on with a couple of shirt points so that it looks pleated from Mm -hmm. the outside and it's great i mean i change the fabric with the seasons sometimes so cute that's a really cute idea that's great you know what it's worked out well i behind me there's um, a little electric fireplace it was something my mom had i took from her house when we she moved and to a nursing home and i love having it near me and it looks great but in the summer you know it just Nobody likes a fireplace in the summer, just mm-hmm. a dark, black, empty, cavernous hole. So I, in the summertime, I put gla- uh, fabric on the glass. So it mm-hmm. transforms that little cabinet and it looks super sweet with a little kiss of sunshine, mm-hmm. summer fabric. I've done it on, I have another electric fireplace in the basement. Uh, it's a TV console, really. And on the sides, the kids have xbox controllers and the video t- and i was like oh nobody wants to look at that stuff either when they were younger there were barbies stuffed in there yeah. naked barbie's clothes <laughs> so, the anyone- naked barbie is like pressed up to the yes, front of the glass exactly. like, <laughs> nothing anyone wants to see ever and i was like oh no this does not go with my aesthetic so i was like i know i'll grab the oh naked barbies aren't your aesthetic <laughs> no that Did you guys not know that? Not part of cottage decor aesthetic. It really it's so is not funny. that. And random um, <laughs> boxes, game boxes. Game boxes are great. Like, you know, yeah, like yeah. great orange, royal blue. They go right. with nothing. It's all that like little types furniture that you, right. know, you have all right. over your house. So that was a great way to hide that. I also, um, some people have said to me, what do I do about my bookcase? I've got a bookcase and the books in there. I love them. They're cherished, but they're not pretty. What do I do? Well. You actually can use the same tip, really. If you get um, just, you can make two frames Mm -hmm. just out of um, like two by four, like little slats of wood. And you can make almost like picture frames and you just add a hook or a a hinge onto them. And you can do the same thing with the fabric without the Velcro. Just use a staple gun and Mm -hmm. you can staple gun it on and put two knobs. And now you have doors for... um, a bookcase that Mm -hmm. can hide things and it costs nothing. The fabric, Mm -hmm. there's so many, like you can pick up fabric either on Etsy, you can get it on Amazon, you can get it at thrift stores and yard sales, you know, it's everywhere. And And you can like use old curtains. You could use shower curtains. There's like so many different ways to pull. I reuse fabric all the time. 
Yeah. And you know what? One of the greatest things is, is if you go to, depending on the size of your um, yes. cabinets, tablecloths at thrift stores. Oh, yeah. Sometimes Great. there are napkins. Like I've bought sets where I've been able to cut it up and you can use the uh, napkin as a pillow cover. So mm. maybe on the bench behind me, I would take the napkin and cover a pillow and then use the tablecloth and use the fabric for the cabinets and then you have something that's coordinating you know you can repeat the pattern throughout so I love that I love that and this is such a great hack I want to throw this in here too I have tons of renovation design ideas on my podcast on my blog and one of the big questions of course is okay well how are you doing these on a budget well one way to give yourself more renovation and remodel money is to use these decor tips like Kim has just pointed out multiple ones to spend less money on furniture and decor and then take that money and put it into the things you can't do like the actual remodeling or redesign work. So, I mean, these are tons of amazing ideas to save money and then put that money toward toward something else that you can't do yourself. Yeah, I have a lot of posts like that that nobody really wants to, no one wants to spend money on plumbing and electrical. Right. It's, you know, it's just people are like, oh, I got to spend money on that. But that's the stuff that you need to really make your house function. It's, you've got to spend the money properly and hire the pros where it's important. Mm -hmm. But then there are so many things you can do. And I tell people that all the time, you don't have to be uh, an artist, you don't have to have experience with paint. You don't have to know how to stencil or how mm-hmm. to sew. I have tons of sewing or fabric pro- projects on my blog. Every one of them can be made with fabric tape or fabric glue. The only thing mm-hmm. I suggest with those two things is if you're making something like curtains and you really want to keep them for the long haul, I would dry clean them rather than mm-hmm. wash them because you just never know how that fabric tape or the glue is going to wash and you don't want to wreck it. But it, other than that, there's really no great skill. You can accomplish mm-hmm. just about anything with a glue gun or mm-hmm. um, some decoupage or a staple gun. They don't mm-hmm. really take a lot of um, you know, skill and time. And what's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to pick something out of somebody's trash. Right. Amen. Use a that's couple right. of dollars <laughs> worth of paint. Hate right. it. And you just repaint it or put it back out at the curb. You really haven't yeah. lost much. Um, and we've lived here for 20 years and not much has changed for the big stuff. But my decor changes all the time because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can, because thrift mm-hmm. stores and, you know, curbside finds. And you can give an, an entire new look without spending all that money. So you mm-hmm. can follow the trends if you want to without mm-hmm. having to dig deep. Yeah, I like that the the whole decor narrative has changed. It's very much making it your own and new is new is no longer the in thing. That's is right. the bottom line. Yeah, which is wonderful. Make it your own. Another really fun one that you have, I think this is so cute. You did a kitchen again fabric, a uh, kitchen skirt DIY. I also will throw out there if you have a farmhouse sink and you have a cabinet underneath, uh, maybe you do have a cabinet underneath this. I also saw somebody do this to add some cottage style and it actually covered a cabinet that was still underneath. So even though there was doors, she just added this. That's um, mine. And so there you go. There you go. That's my DIY. That's so funny. Or somebody, um, that was my, my dilemma is that I have a skirt. I, so I wanted a skirt underneath my farmhouse sink and I don't have a farmhouse sink. So I said to my husband, what are we going to do here? You know what? I'll skirt the sink and then I'll make it look like that. And he said, no, we've got the kids. We have me, our garbage is under there. You put a tension rod. We have to constantly move it around. It's not going to work. So Again, it's just a matter of solving. Oh, I see what you're saying. You did. Oh, no. Yeah, yours is different than the one that I saw. I'm looking closer now. Okay, so she... Wait, this is brilliant. All right. So you don't have a farmhouse sink. I don't have a farmhouse sink. So what we did was I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I popped off the piece of the... I'm looking at this now. Yeah, this is genius. Was we put a board on that was white that looks... It gives the illusion of the sink. And then underneath, rather than put a um, 
like a, a tension rod or some mm-hmm. sort of string, which is what people usually do and put rings on it. I mounted a curtain and a, a small dowel on the top of the doors. Mm-hmm. So it's a faux skirt. It's attached to the doors. So you can actually open it up, get what you need and close it. I mean, I've had it for years and years. My girls have had guy friends over who like, you know, are not careful. It's it's not people are like, oh, well, you know, that wouldn't work. The skirt wouldn't work with my family. It works. You just again, it's thinking outside the box. Yeah, like, oh, it's going to work for me. And so my husband and I constructed it. This is genius. I love that. I like when I picked this out, I wasn't even realizing exactly what I was. This is way more creative than I was even giving it credit for. So if anyone's not understanding this project, um, again, the link to this project will be on the show notes. If you're watching on YouTube, a picture has come up so you can actually see it. So if you need to rewind and press pause to look at it closer. So she has a normal white porcelain sink. It is not a farmhouse sink with a from what I'm looking at, like a Formica cabinet or um, countertop that just... It's just a laminate countertop. Yeah. Yep. So she took the face of the base cabinet top. Did you take it off completely? Yeah. You just pop it out. Those yeah. cabinets just pop out so you can get to the plumbing. And we just replaced yep. the fixtures that were on the back of that. And we put them on the board that we have there now. Yep. And it just has like a white board that looks like a faux farmhouse sink face. It's genius. I love that. It was a, it's just a quick way because yeah. we put in the and kitchen. And very cheap. We were, we <laughs> Much were cheaper than a farmhouse sink. sink and, right. And now mm-hmm. I'm like, why do I need that? It's just, it's a look. Is it a look for everyone? People might say, oh, why are you doing that? You should have just removed the counter and this and that and done it. You know what? We could if I really wanted to. But at this point, I really like the look of my kitchen. I don't, mm-hmm. I love the Formica. It was just a way for us to get it you know, get what we wanted at the time. Get a look for less. Yeah, That's what it lot, is. Lot, a a look for less. Yeah. Uh, where can people find you? And if there was any other post they should check out that is like, has Kim all over it on your website, what post would that be? Huh? Well, I'm everywhere. You know, I'm at exquisitelyunremarkable.com. And then now you know, 10 years later, I am everywhere. I have a TikTok, I have an Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you name it. Um, Pinterest. Um, but I mainly, I love the blog. I love the, I yeah. love the long form and I love the conversation with people. People leave yeah. me comments like crazy and that's my favorite thing. And, you know, I've made a lot of friends and a lot of people ask questions and I love that. I think the teacher in me, another project that's all me Hmm. Or a post doesn't have to be a project, so like just a post show, maybe one showcasing your home. Yeah. I mean, you know, I love, I love the, the house. The one I did most recently, I really love. It's a Christmas post, but mm-hmm. it's very different. And it's, um, I took an old sled out of the garbage and I had some old fabric and I wanted to remake it. And I covered the slats of the sled in red toile. Uh, mm. fabric and painted the rest of the sled red. It was a different kind of take. Most people stencil the sled. I've done all of them myself. You know, you stencil mm. the sled or you write things on the sled or you put, um, you know, skates or you put a wreath on it. And this was just a different project. I just like trying different things. I like yeah. trying different ways. But you know what? I will say the one one thing that's probably my easiest trick is using a sticker to make a sign. If you're mm-hmm. into cottage style, farmhouse style, signs are huge, but people are like, oh, I don't want to buy them. They're expensive. I don't want to make them. I have to stencil or paint. You know what? Wall de- decals are everywhere. They're at the Dollar Tree. They have all sorts That's of words true. on them, pictures. You can get mm-hmm. them on Amazon. Paint a board. Home Depot will cut it for you. You don't even have to be handy that way. You can walk in and just say, I need this board cut down. You can find an old piece of wood, take an old sign that you had that you bought at Home Goods five years mm-hmm. ago, and it's no longer, you know, your style. Paint over it, slap that sticker on, decoupage over, and you're good to go. I think that's like probably my favorite. Look thing. for less with Kim. There you go. It's genius. I love it. Kim, it's an honor having you on here. It was really fun. I pray God's richest blessing over your heart, your home, your girls working. Thank you so much. I had everyone so working fun. from home over there. <laughs> yes, everybody. My full, full house. Just the way I like Aww. it. 
Well, it was a blessing having you here. Thank you so much. It was absolutely my pleasure to talk. Hey guys, Anna here. If you found this video helpful, then you do not want to miss this video right here beside me on the screen. Click on it. I know you're going to enjoy it. You guys remember, you cannot be redefined, only redeveloped one imperfect day at a time. Your story matters and you are loved.